In today's video, I'll be combining my personal experience on hundreds of flights with a healthy dose of science to help you pick the perfect outfit for the plane while also avoiding common but unexpected mistakes. The most important thing to remember when choosing anything to wear on the airplane is to avoid anything that's going to be constricting. Pants with tight waistbands are uncomfortable in general. Get rid of those. But they become especially uncomfortable on the plane since cabin pressure changes cause the gases in your stomach to expand, leaving you feeling a little bit bloated. When researching for this video, one of the most common questions that travelers searched for was, should I wear jeans or leggings on the plane? Let us know down in the comments if you have ever worn jeans on an airplane. I did one time and I never will again since jeans are a big no-no as they almost always break this rule of having non-constrictive clothing. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend leggings either. Or at least not those athletic workout compression leggings that end up sucking in your waist and making your butt look good. Not those. At least not for the plane. High-waisted leggings or anything that's going to put pressure on your belly should be avoided. I'll always opt for low-waisted casual leggings, not workout leggings, with a decently loose waistband. And I'll link to all of the things that I mention in this video in the description since most of it can be purchased on Amazon. Also leave your belts at home. Not only are they constricting, but they are also a hassle since they can trigger airport security alarms and often need to be taken off and placed in the security bin for separate screening. I will also layer a pair of loose sweatpants on top of my leggings. Or if it's the middle of summer, I'll pack these instead so I'm able to put them on top of my leggings while I'm on the plane. Just like bringing a sweater, having an extra pant layer that you can slip on top without needing any privacy to do so is going to give you the flexibility to cool down or warm up since planes can be super hot or super cold and often end up being both at different times during the flight. And to add to the attractiveness of my airplane outfit, I will then take the loose leggings that have a loose pair of sweatpants on top of them and pair this with a loose high-necked t-shirt. I like my bottom layer to be a loose t-shirt for comfort, but then I also like to have that high neck so that I am fully covered if I end up in any strange sleeping positions, which I usually do across airplane seats. If you are watching this video and your mind is buzzing with your own travel tips, then you might be interested in checking out today's video sponsor, Travel Payouts. Travel Payouts is the ultimate travel partnership platform designed exclusively for travel bloggers seeking passive income. You can promote travel brands in your content using affiliate tools and earn a commission from every purchase. The platform unites over 100 trusted travel brands like Booking.com and TripAdvisor with whom you can partner with without having a big following. All you need to do is register on Travel Payouts by using the link under this video and you can start working with brands immediately without any approval. So start monetizing your content today and also use my promo code MEGAN to get an extra $25 on your first payout. And right back into what to wear on the airplane. I will also layer a loose fitting zip up sweater with a hood on top of my high neck t-shirt. The zipper makes it easy to take the sweater on and off and then also gives you the option of an unzipped jacket when you can't decide if you are too hot for a sweater but too cold to not have a sweater. A hood could also warm you up, but I personally like it for the privacy. Having a hood up, noise cancelling headphones, and then also an eye mask over your face is a great way to completely zone out everyone else on the plane and actually get some sleep. When it comes to fabric, merino wool is a traveler's best friend, especially for that sweater. Merino wool clothing can be a bit pricey, but every traveler is going to tell you that it's worth the investment. Not only is it comfortable with zero itch factor, it's one of the only fabrics that is naturally antimicrobial, resists odors, wicks moisture, and keeps you warm in the cold, but then also cool in the heat. Magic. My friend Nora over at The Professional Hobo on YouTube has a ton of travel experience and recently announced that she would be taking a three-month trip to Europe packing only merino wool clothing. Check out her video linked in the description where she explains why she chose this unique approach and gives an exclusive look at exactly what she's bringing along. Apart from merino wool, I'll opt for a shirt that is made of synthetic fabrics like polyester or polyamide since these are more wrinkle resistant than natural fabrics like cotton or linen. However, cotton and linen do tend to be more breathable. 
So there are pros and cons, but regardless of what fabric you do pick, do try to avoid anything that is too lightweight or too silky like a chiffon or satin material, as this does tend to get caught on things and can be susceptible to rips. Color is also something to think about. There are obvious reasons to choose darker colors, such as the fact that whatever you spill on yourself won't show as easily, nor will anything dirty that you happen to brush against. One of the less obvious reasons to wear a dark colored sweater or t-shirt for the plane is that it's not going to be reflected in the entertainment system screen the same way that light colored clothing would. This is one of those things that you would never think about until you sit down on a plane with a bright white sweater and then you're looking at the entertainment system and all you see is your white sweater reflected back at you. A bonus hack is to bring wrinkle release spray with you that you can use as you get off the plane as well as one of those little stain remover sticks in case you do end up with any spills. Which honestly if you're trying to eat or drink on a plane and there's any turbulence it's pretty difficult not to have any spills. Or maybe it's just me. Length and fit of your clothing is important too since you want to avoid any clothing that is going to be too loose or too long. Avoid wearing any long shawls, ponchos, kimonos, wide-legged pants, or maxi dresses as they may restrict your movement and they also tend to catch on things as you move through the plane. It's also pretty common for your feet to swell while on the plane, so in general I'd suggest that you wear loose-fitting, comfy shoes. But personally, I will usually wear the bulkiest shoes that I am taking with me on my trip so I don't need to pack them in a suitcase. And my bulkiest shoes are not necessarily my roomiest shoes, but I will make sure that after I've gone through airport security and I put the shoes back on my feet, I tend to leave the loosest as the loosest. I'll leave the laces tied very loosely so that my feet have room inside of them to move around. And if you do take your shoes off during the flight, be mindful that it might be difficult to get your feet back into those shoes at the end of the flight since your feet may still be swollen when you land. And we can't talk about shoes without also talking about socks, which you definitely want to wear, especially if you have to take your shoes off when you go through airport security because you do not want to be walking barefoot on the airport floor. Gross. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that you do not want to wear any clothing that is going to be constricting. Well, there is a scarier reason as to why that goes beyond just the fact that constricting clothing is uncomfortable. Wearing tight clothing can restrict your overall circulation, which is going to elevate your risk for developing blood clots while in flight. So the only exception to this rule is going to be compression socks, which can actually prevent blood from pooling and clotting in your lower legs, which is going to reduce your risk of having a blood clot. And plane travel puts everyone at risk of blood clots, which can be deadly, but there are also a ton of factors to be aware of that are going to put you at an elevated risk, which include things like age as well as medications like the birth control pill. How you choose to style your hair for a long flight is also going to be something to think about. I do like to have my hair out of my face, but I find it very annoying and uncomfortable to have a ponytail or a braid or anything on the back of my head since I want to rest my head against the seat back. I'll occasionally opt for a very high broccoli style ponytail or a bun on the top of my head, but I also find that just having the elastic there can give me headaches on long flights. So my usual go-to is to have two braids going down the side of my face. And here's an airplane outfit item that you might not have thought of, sunglasses. Plane lights are dimmed on long flights to encourage sleeping and give the flight attendants a bit of a break. And also so your eyes will adjust to the darkness of the plane cabin in case there is an emergency and you need to evacuate. Anyway, if you do have sensitive eyes, I'm looking at you my fellow blue and green eyed friends, or if you have had something like laser eye surgery within the last year, your eyes can be especially sensitive to bright lights. So when the plane lands and everyone opens up 